I've been practicing this martial art for over 12 years now. And in that time, one of my key observations is that different people can have drastically different experiences when it comes to learning Arnis. If you do a quick search for videos of Arnis on YouTube, you're going to find different systems, terms, patterns, philosophies, and maybe some interesting rituals. And depending on who you're talking to, Arnis can also go by the name of Kali, Eskrima, or the popular umbrella term, Filipino Martial Arts. Kali, Arnis, Eskrima, FMA, it's a wide body of fighting systems and it can sometimes be confusing for a beginner to navigate these differences and nuances. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Daniel. If you're new around here, I'm an Arnis World Champion and FMA content creator. A few weeks ago, I asked my Instagram friends what they wish they knew before they got started with Filipino martial arts. Using what they shared with me, along with some observations and insights of my own, I'll be sharing with you six things that you might want to know before getting started with FMA, before getting started with Arnis. And hopefully this video equips you with some insights to help you understand and navigate this very vast and diverse field of martial arts. Arnis isn't just one thing, as you may have been able to guess from its different names such as Kali and Eskrima. There are actually several different styles and systems that practice these weapon arts each with their own unique characteristics as well as similarities. Your experience with one school of Kali or Nis Eskrima or whatever they call it is likely going to be different with your experience with another. And I think it's useful for beginners to know this because sometimes students get the impression that how their teacher or how their school teaches them is the one and only way of going about Filipino martial arts. The correctness of your patterns, terminologies, philosophies, is going to depend on which particular style you're practicing or what your specific goals are as a practitioner. I'm somewhat of a relativist when it comes to these things, so I believe that as an art, the right way to learn is, in my opinion, contextual. For me, what's important is that what you do and what you practice works for what you need it to work for. And if it doesn't, you should know that there are a plethora of options, styles, and systems that you can explore and learn from. I've personally observed that a lot of the people who have never trained in Arnis, if they know of Arnis at all, they associate it with the use of sticks. And while Arnis does make use of sticks in training, it's not just about sticks. Arnis makes use of different weapon combinations such as sticks, bangkau or long staff, swords, knives, and some styles and systems have incorporated the use of other weapons as well. More so, a lot of systems make use of empty hand techniques as well. While in my opinion, Arnis specializes in being a weapon-based art, some might say that it's complete in the sense that it covers a wide range of combat dynamics. Granted, a particular style or system or instructor might specialize in a certain weapon or a certain subsystem of the art, I think as a whole, there is so much to learn from, there is so much to explore within Filipino martial arts. There's a popular saying in FMA that goes something like this, if you can fight with a stick, you can fight with a sword. In my opinion, that really depends and sometimes it can actually be an exaggeration. Sticks and swords have different properties and how you would use one as a weapon may not necessarily be exactly the same as how you would use the other. Swords are sharp and generally heavier than sticks. Sticks are blunt and meant for hard impact. Because of these differences, there are nuances and techniques that vary between the two weapons. Granted, of course, that there are similarities as well. It is true that if you can fight with a stick, you can fight with a sword, so long as when you're practicing with the stick, you're actually assuming the elements of a sword. Otherwise, while you may know how to fight with a stick as a weapon, you'll still need to learn the ways of a blade alongside this to become proficient with its use. Basically, understand what you're actually learning and what the techniques are actually meant for. Different training methodologies exist for different objectives. You can train in Arnis as an art form, either as a means of self-expression or a cultural preservation of traditional movements and methods. Or you can practice it as a combat sport with rules, regulations, and specified parameters. It can also be a means of learning self-defense to hopefully protect you when you're in danger. Now, depending on the particular aspect you're working on, that might dictate how you're going to go about your practice, how you're going to go about your training, and the techniques that you'll rehearse. For example, when I'm practicing it as an art form, 
I just want to flow and look good and feel good. But when I practice combat sports, I want to be efficient and rely on high percentage techniques and movements. The ones I've repeated hundreds to thousands of times and I know I can rely on. And if I'm thinking self-defense, my intention isn't necessarily to win the fight, but to survive it. Or figure out how to avoid the fight altogether. FMA is pretty great in the sense that it can offer so much knowledge for different things, so I really think it has something for everyone. Personally, I love practicing it as a combat sport and as an art form. Any self-defense related knowledge I pick up is more of a bonus for me. Okay, so full disclosure, I barely dabble in any other art outside of FMA ones. But someone sent this as a response and I do hear this often from other practitioners as well. I think there's a general sentiment that knowledge in FMA supplements and complements well other arts, other martial arts, other combat sports. This all makes sense to me because I believe that FMA has a solid knowledge base when it comes to close quarter weapons combat. And I think anyone looking to become what one would consider a complete fighter or complete martial artist would want something like this. Now this is more of a personal opinion, but in my experience of interacting with and observing different practitioners, it seems to me that having exposure and some training in different styles and systems within Filipino martial arts, or outside Filipino martial arts for that matter, it can lead to a more open mind and a more integrated way of understanding Filipino martial arts. The most articulated practitioners I've met it seems to me that the reason why they can understand the art so deeply and explain it so well is because they have different points of comparison and have seen different points of views. Their expression of FMA feels more personal because they've taken the time to really understand it and truly make it their own. Our niece is a self-expressing art that way in that it can invite you to find what truly works for you. One of my favorite interviews I've had the pleasure of documenting was that of Guru Nathan Dominguez, where he shares that you don't use Arnis, you are Arnis. Sometimes there's a tendency, you need to look like this person. As a student of sports science and being part of a team of, 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 of sports scientists, I'm like, yeah, but every person is different. Your height, your weight, your, your, your bone structure, everything is about you, your DNA. So the way, even the way I teach, because this is how Elmer taught us, he's like, you don't, you're not supposed to look like me. I'm teaching you the concepts so that you can look like you. You can find yourself. You can use um, the core essence of the system. You need to make it your own. And that's when the beauty of that whole thing will be seen. That's when people will appreciate it because it's, you're not mimicking anybody. You're not pretending to be something you're not. You, you're, you're you. And I think that the best versions of all the grandmasters you see they were good because they were themselves, you know? Um, they stood out because they, they became the art. They became the art. And I've started to learn this for myself as I expose myself to other arts, other systems just a little bit and learn a little from the people I meet. I may not always agree with another person's paradigm, but having insights into how they see things helps me better integrate why I move how I move and that allows me to take a few more steps into making the art a bit more personal for me. If you've made it this far to the video, I'm happy. I worked really hard at putting this together and it felt really meaningful. If this video was of any value of you, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. Feedback like that really helps me know what you guys would want more of as I figure out what sort of content I want to create more of. Speaking of support for this channel, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters. Your help in producing these videos is really appreciated. Thank you to everyone who watched this video and as always, I'll see you in the next one.